Praise the Lord. Can you say praise the Lord? Oh, somebody's wanting to have church tonight. Saturday night, the devil's crowd's going to have a big time. We're going to have a bigger time. Amen. Fantastic looking crowd out here. Give yourself an applause for being here. I want to start off with some scripture tonight. In Psalms 100, the Bible says, Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Is anybody happy about serving Jesus? Amen. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. And that's what we're going to do tonight. We're going to come before his presence with singing and glorifying his name. And I I just want to read the whole chapter. It's short. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that hath made us, not we ourselves. If I'd made myself, I'd have messed it up. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Now enter into his gates with thanksgiving. Thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. How many of you got something to praise the Lord about? All right, I'm going to remember that. I'm going to be looking throughout the service. Enter his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. For the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting and his truth endureth to all generations. And I'm glad that what I hold in my hand tonight is absolute truth. Every bit of it is absolute truth, and I'm thankful for that. I'm glad I've hid it in my heart that I might not sin against God. And I'm excited about what's going on here in this church and also in this part of the country. Revivals are breaking out everywhere. i got another call on a revival starting. And and we're just so fortunate to be able to, to be asked to pray for those revivals, much less be part. And we're thankful for that. Thankful for you being here. Let's stand all over the building for those of you that can stand. And while you're standing, would you look to your neighbor? I want you to look to your neighbor and say, you're the best thing I've seen all day. (laughs) That's what I wanted to see, fellowship, right there. (laughs) Let us go to the Lord in prayer. Kind Jesus, we thank you for this day. Thank you for your grace and mercy. And God, as we all remain standing and praise you through this song, God, we lift up the name above all other names, the name whereby all men must be saved, the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. Bless this service tonight. God will glorify and magnify your name in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the sweet, sweet Holy Ghost and all God's people shouted. Amen. Amen. Help us sing. Sing the wondrous love of Jesus. Sing his mercy and his grace. In the mansions bright and blessed, He'll prepare for us a place. When we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be. When we all see Jesus, we'll sing and shout the victory. will overspread the sky, but when traveling days are over, not a shadow, not a sigh, and when we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be, when we all see Jesus, we'll sing and shout the victory. Let us then be true and faithful, trusting, serving every day. Just one glimpse of Him in glory will the tolls of life repay. And when we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be. When we all see Jesus. 
us will sing and shout the victory. Amen. Sing it out on this last verse now. Onward to the prize before us. Soon his beauty will behold. Soon the pearly gates will open. We shall tread the streets of gold. When we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be. When we all see Jesus, we'll sing and shout victory. How about it for this band? Don't they do a good job? Well, without any further ado, I've known these folks ever since I was probably about 12 years old. They were a name in our home that we all knew. And we sung their songs and still sing some of them today. And I want you to make welcome all the way from Hendersonville, Tennessee, the Isaacs. Well, good evening. good evening, and that felt good hearing that singing and singing along. Those songs are so good, aren't they? Those classic hymns. We're happy to be here. Thank you for coming today. Are we ready? Let's do it. Okay, ready? Come on. Two, three. start, aren't we? Who needs a sound system anyway? If we have to, we'll do it like the good old days, and we'll have fun doing it that way, but uh, you know, just every now and then you get a little bit of kinks and things like these modern day electronics and technology, so I apologize. 
for that. We have spent, we've been here since about 2 o'clock today getting set up and sound checking, and everything worked just fine when we left the building a while ago. So I want to know who is messing with our, no, I'm just kidding. Um, it happens, uh, but we're, we're so happy to be here tonight, and um, we're going to be featuring songs off of a lot of different projects. We have been recording songs for many, many years. Has anybody never seen the Isaacs before tonight? This is your first time ever. Lots of you. Oh, my word. Where have y'all been? Else. You know we do that Hawaii, that Georgia Mountain Fair about once a year. As a matter of fact, we're going to be there next Sunday. <laughs> it's very unusual that we would work this close to a, a date, but if uh, after church Sunday, come over and be with us. We don't normally go on till pretty late, so 4 o'clock-ish, so we'd love to have you join us uh, next Sunday as well. Thank you, Ben. He's trying to fix my, my uh, mandolin pack. Is it, is it on? Well, how many of you have seen us before? Let me see your hands. The rest of us. The rest of us. <laughs> Thank you, Mother. I'll have you know I choose to be blonde. That reminds me of my favorite joke. These two blondes walked into a building. You'd think one of them would have seen it. Oh, that was a good joke. You know what? We want you to hear all the instruments, right? So give us just a minute and we'll figure this out. Um, we were, let's, you want to introduce everybody? Yeah, Thanks I might as well. Might There's a lot of you time. that don't know us, and we can save time doing this now. We won't have to do it later. Uh, a lot of you that don't know who we are, you would not know, but this lady right here is a miracle from God uh, in many ways, and we'll tell you about more of that later. But she is the daughter of Jewish Polish Holocaust survivors. Our grandparents are Holocaust survivors. And they were liberated at the end of the war by our blessed American soldiers and our allies. And we truly thank God for the United States military veterans. We love you. We appreciate you. You know what? Let's honor. Let's just go ahead and honor all of our veterans. If you've served in the United States military or you're currently serving today, will you please stand up if you're able and let us acknowledge you or raise your hand if you're not able to stand. We owe our lives and our freedom, especially the Isaacs, to these men and women and others like them because without them we wouldn't be here today, and we're so thankful for you all. Uh, Mom was born in Germany in a French Army relief camp and moved to the United States when she was two years old and grew up in the Bronx, New York. That's right, New York. She's still a hippie, though. You see these feathers right here, these feathers? They're so pretty. And it's an amazing story how a Jewish girl from the Bronx, New York, became the matriarch of a bluegrass gospel family from Tennessee. Miss Lily Isaacs, make her welcome tonight. So uh, she's our mom, and the three of us here in the front singing with her are her babies. Right, Mom? Always right, your always. babies. Okay. Uh, and the eldest, Ben, I'll get to him in just a minute. He's busy trying to get this... A mandolin to work. Now, if it can be fixed, Ben will fix it because he's our fix-it man. He does it all. If you've got a car problem tonight when you leave, just find Ben. He'll probably be able to jump start it or fix it or something for you. Anyway, uh, so I'll, I'll save him for last. He's the oldest. Our baby sister here playing the guitar. She and her husband, John, have been married. How many years now, Becky? 20, almost 25 years in this June. And uh, she's only, she wanted you to know she's only 35, but close. Uh, but anyway, um, we're so proud of her. She's won a lot of awards and very talented. Our baby sister, Miss Rebecca Isaacs Bowman. Becky. <laughs> Playing the bass, fixing mandolins and everything else that goes wrong. Mr. Ben Isaacs, are you happy to see Ben over there? And uh, I'm the middle sister, mom's favorite. <laughs> My name is Sonia Isaacs Yeri, and I'm happy to be here with you all as well. Thank you for having us. <laughs> Playing the electric guitar and acoustic guitar, and he'll be singing for you too, is Becky's son, 22 years old, Mr. Levi Bowman on the end. <laughs> And over here playing the drums and percussion, he's been with the Isaacs on and off 
for about 12 years. Now he's a Georgia boy. Mr. Nathan Fawcett, we call him Spicket. I forgot we're in North Carolina, but we're close to Georgia, so that's close enough. <laughs> All right, and a uh, special thank you to our sound man back there, Mr. Mark Caps, and our wonderful nanny product manager, Miss Valencia Houston. They're listening. Give them a nice hand, would you please? All right, this is a song that Becky and I wrote with my husband simply because we're just glad that God doesn't judge us like people on Facebook do. Can I get an amen somewhere? Called Rocks. <laughs> There's a lot of people talking about people looking down on everybody acting like they're sitting on a steeple keeping all their own faults locked up in a big song. It's the only one we do. Ben, tell them about this next song if you will. I'll be glad to. Well, howdy, everybody. Sorry for all that. Uh, there was a, uh, I think something got turned on that wasn't on a while ago, and it just blocked out her mandolin frequency, so just change frequencies is all you have to do, right? Oh, wow. That's That's it. We, uh, uh, we, we love singing new songs, we love singing old songs, and the song I'm going to sing for you now is a song that we've been singing for, I guess, probably a dozen years, and this is a song that Bill Gaither called me one day, and he was so excited. He said, hey, 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 Ben, a pinky promise, it was exactly like that. He said, you kids need to sing this song. I remember doing a little research and found it was a number one song in 1959. See if you remember this one. Two, three, six. 
There's a village hidden deep in a valley Among the pine trees half forlorn And there on a sunny morning Little Jimmy Brown was born Bum, bum, bum All the chapel bells were ringing In the little valley town And the song that they were singing was for baby Jimmy Brown And the little congregation Prayed for guidance from above Lead us not into temptation Bless this hour of meditation Guide him with eternal There's a village hidden deep in a valley Beneath the mountains high above And there, twenty years thereafter Jimmy was to meet his love Bum, bum, bum All the chapel bells were ringing T'was a great day in his life the song that they were singing was for Jimmy and his wife and the little congregation prayed for guidance from above. lead us not into temptation bless the Lord this celebration may their lives be filled with From the village, hidden deep in a valley, one rainy morning, dark and gray, a soul winged its way to heaven. Jimmy Brown had passed away. Bum, 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 just one lonely bell was rung. In the little valley town T'was farewell that it was singing To our buddy Jimmy Brown And the little congregation not into temptation may his soul find the salvation of thy great eternal love how many of you remember the song you remember who did it originally? The Browns. Jim Ed, Bonnie, and Maxine. As I said before, it was a number one song in 1959, both in country music and in pop music. Boy, times have changed, haven't they? I love singing that song. They sure have changed. Maybe Adele will bring that one back on her next record. Or... Maybe. <laughs> Good job, Ben. Well, uh... Mom said we had a special request to do this uh, next song and that um, actually several people that go here to church wanted to hear it and might maybe needed to hear it tonight. My husband and I wrote this song with a friend of ours in 2009 and uh, never dreamed that the country singer Martina McBride would record it and have a number one song with this song and, um, and that uh, she would start a, an organization called Team Martina that helped people all over the world with this very thing we're going to be singing about. Um, we wrote this song about mom's story. Mom is now a 35, 35-year breast cancer survivor. We called her on the phone that day that we wrote this song. And we said, tell us what it was like, um, the whole story from beginning to end. And she told us, and we wrote this song. 
so important to have a good support team when you go through something like that, isn't it? Your friends, your family, your church. God, he's the most important thing. Listen to the words of this song, and I hope it'll encourage you this evening. She dropped the phone and burst into tears. The doctor just confirmed her fears. Her husband held it in. If you're just 30, three kids who need you in their lives. He said, I know that you're afraid, and I am too. But you'll never be alone, I promise. You. When you're Just wants to feel like a woman again She said, I don't think I can do this anymore We took her in our arms And said, that's what our love is for When you're weak, I'll be strong When you let go, I'll hold on When you need to cry so much. Thank you. What a beautiful song. And it has been, it's been viewed how many times? Over 30 million times. 30 million on times YouTube. on YouTube. Different Isn't versions. that amazing? Too. Different versions. And, and I'm so grateful that they had a pen that day <laughs> when, when they called me on the phone. And, you know, I know there are people in this church that have battled cancer. According to Pastor, we talked a little bit. And we wanted to sing that song for you because you're like me. You're a survivor. And you might not go to this church and you're here tonight and you also have battled cancer or you have a relative or a good friend that is battling cancer, already has, or you've lost someone to cancer. Friends, the support team is like one of the most important things you can have, regardless of any of those scenarios. And I had that with my church and my family. 
And you know, 35 years later, I can still count on them, regardless of what comes up. And you know, don't take that for granted, friends. Love the people that are around you deeply. Care about them. Hold them close to your heart, because we don't know what tomorrow holds. But I'm so glad that I know who holds tomorrow. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Thank you so much. Thank you. And you know, every time we do that song, I remember... Uh, you know, God's allowed me to write a book a few years ago about my experiences in my lifetime and where I've come from, and I'm going to share a little bit of that with you. But I never will forget what it felt like when the doctor called my house, and my husband had to grab the phone because I was shaking like a leaf when he said it was cancer. And all three of these little, little kids up here, my son and my two daughters, were at my feet praying and crying and saying, why is mommy crying? And at that moment in my life... I didn't care if the trash had to be taken out. I didn't care what kind of car I was driving or what was hanging in my wardrobe. It didn't matter. All that mattered is that I wanted to live to raise my children. That's all I cared about. And God blessed my life somehow. And I don't understand how that works. Some people can make it. Some people don't. I don't know. But all I do know is God is good. And as long as we walk in his plan that he's already designed for our lives, your life will work out exactly the way he planned it. And that's what brings me to the story I want to read to you. Sonia told you about my history and my parents. And, and um, I love sharing out of my book this particular story everywhere we go because, you know, we're living in a day and time now where people don't think that history actually took place. But I'm living proof to tell you that it did. And my mother and father both survived concentration camps. This is one of the stories my mother has shared with me all of my life. My parents were taken from their homes, torn away from their families. They were transported like cattle on train cars from Poland to Germany. It was January 1943 when my mother found herself at Bergen-Belsen concentration camp in Germany. It was one of the most horrific times in history. Nourishment came at the front of a food line, a roll of bread that had to last for several days, one cup of black coffee, and one cup of watery soup, sometimes with nothing in it but grass. It seemed they were always being put in lines and separated, either to do jobs or to get food, or to simply turn around and go back to the barracks. Yet lines often led to worse things than a cup of grass-filled soup and watered-down coffee. One day, as my mother waited in line with her sisters Lotta and her friend Sabrina, a soldier began separating the women. You this way and you that way. Initially, the girls were separated. My mother directed to the left, while Sabrina and Zlata remained in line. Suddenly, as the line began to move forward, Sabrina grabbed my mother's arm. She's coming with me, Sabrina said, and the guard ignored her, allowing my mother to change lines. The line my mother had been in at first went to the gas chamber. Everyone in that line was killed that day. The line that Sabrina pulled my mother into received their normal ration and went back to their barracks. Day after day, week after week, year after year, the difference between life and death could be something as simple as a guard separating people into lines or a prisoner taking one step too close to a fence or the random tug of a soldier's trigger finger, or the angelic action of a friend named Sabrina. Sabrina saved my mother's life that day. But you see, Sabrina didn't know it. But I know in my heart that God already knew somewhere down in time our family would be here at this church in North Carolina just the way you see us, singing the praises of Jesus, Yeshua, the Messiah of the whole world. Amen. 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 Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. He knew that over 40 years ago that I would give my heart to him as my personal Savior. And I didn't know I would have three amazingly talented children that can sing and play and write songs. But you know what? This was his plan for the Isaacs. But if you're sitting out there and you're wondering where your life is right now, you woke up this morning thinking, 
okay, God, what am I doing with my life? What am I doing here? Why is this happening? Friend, God already has your plan. He knows it's up to you to find him and stay in his will. Praise the Lord, because what the enemy sought out to destroy in every way, God already has a plan. Amen. Thank you for listening to my story. I feel a good presence of the Lord here tonight. Praise the Lord. Thank you. Thank you. I got to keep my mother till she was 95 years old. I lost her four years ago this past month, and I miss her every day. My daughters wrote a beautiful song about the lonely times we all have. I'm having the same trouble they had now. Did you, look at this. This is a mandolin on steroids. That's it. <laughs> Actually, we anointed it and prayed over it. And, <laughs> and this banjo happened? had a lot of caffeine when it was little. It stunted its growth. Yeah. So, got it, left it in the dryer too long. Well, I understand. Well, I tell you, I'm having a good time tonight and looking forward to the next set. We got to hear Sweet Holy Spirit. We got to hear that. We got to hear Size on Sparrow. You got to see that. Okay. Don't you do that one? I'll tell you in a minute. Yeah, we'll work it out. <laughs> you sing it. I just can't remember it. Wrong song. I don't know. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay, I was right. Am I, am I right? That's not okay. okay, we'll find it. You, you're never supposed to tell the preacher he's wrong in front of all these people. You obviously, obviously don't argue with a woman very much. <laughs> and you, hey, and you, and you know what, Ben? For every kid that wears a hat in this church again in their service, I'm giving them your cell phone number. No, you're okay, brother. You're okay. Keep it on. You don't even Please have my it. cell phone number. You want to bet? I have got it. Do you really? Yes. This is weird. Travis Coleman gave it to me or Rick oh. about 15 years ago. Did you change it? Nope. 
Amen. Amen. No, you didn't break a rule. We don't have that rule, but I just thought I'd use that. I was sitting over here thinking about it. (laughs) Oh, well, I'm going to have fun tonight. I don't know about you. It's it's great. You know what? And Christians can have fun in the house of God, too, you know? I'm, I enjoy, I'm enjoying myself. I've laughed and I've, I've, I've cried. And that, that song that she sang, sang I'm going to love you through it, I, di- I didn't even know you were one of the writers on that. So that's awesome. Um, I want the people that's battled cancer in the last year to stand first. You battled cancer in the last year. Would you stand? Aunt Wanda? Look at this. Now, if you've battled cancer in your life, would you stand? Folks, let's give them a round of applause. They are fighters. They are fighting. Amen. Thank the Lord. Hey, God's grace is sufficient. And by the way, he's still got a hand of healing. He still uses that. He is Jehovah Rapha. He's God, my healer. I'm glad the word of God is is still strong and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. And with his stripes, we are healed. Amen. Amen. I believe that with all of my heart and and uh, thankful, I'm thankful for, for, for the Isaacs being here this evening and us being able to have them. We didn't have but about seven days to be able to, to promote this. So it's a good looking crowd tonight, sister. You've already started. Yes. Yeah. She she made it. Amen. Yes, ma'am. That's where my mother-in-law's from. I want to talk to you after service. I need some stuff. To... Thank you, ma'am. We appreciate that. So I'm much. looking forward to that. <laughs> Thank you. Hey, after that testimony, are you glad the Isaacs are here tonight? That's real ministry. God bless you. Praise the Lord. It's awesome. We're going to have our ushers come tonight to receive an offering. Now, listen, we want to bless them, okay? That means you get your wallet out, you turn to page 100. <laughs> you bless it and say, God, double this in the name of Jesus, all right? We want to, we want to do it. Hey, I'm going to give, too. I mean, I, I try to give my part, too, because I'm just like you. And so let's, let's give to the Lord. When you, when you give to them, you're supporting the ministry of the Lord. And for them, listen... I know to be able to, to do a benefit for them to come off a road and do that, however long ago it was, doesn't matter. But for them to do that, that means something to the kingdom of God. Amen? That means something. So let's support them tonight. You ask God, God, what can I give to them that you've blessed me with? Anybody in the house blessed tonight? Yes, well, let's bless them. And uh, the church will bless them too. But let's, uh, we're, after, after the offering... Uh, we're going to take a, a little bit of time. They're going to go back to their table and, and let you go to the restroom. The ladies' is gonna, the ladies restroom will be out after that after a while. After a while. Yeah, we had things some more first. Let me show you. <laughs> Lord have mercy. We, 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 Mom got this all wrong. We thought we were supposed to do the offering yeah. in the middle of the first set. And I'm then we were going to take a break after then and then go to the bathroom. Okay. Is that good? Or? Is it okay? That's an awful short set if we quit now. Oh, I was expecting an hour when you got back, but oh, we'll do thank that you. Too. <laughs> we need to talk. <laughs> I feel like a gnat and a yo-yo tonight. You hear me? Welcome to my life, brother. <laughs> I, hey, listen, I've prayed for you. I'm gonna pray more now. I appreciate it. Lord, have mercy. <laughs> Let's. I wish y'all could hear the things they're saying to me back here. <laughs> You know who it's like being on stage with? Somebody tell me. Braden Rumfelt. You're exactly right. Who's that? 
my boy. Ah. Yes, I love it. You, you, you're going to have a time with him. Or he's going to have a time with you, one of the two. Let's pray and bless this offering right now. Kind Jesus, God, we bless this offering right now. God, we pray that you help those that have to give to give. Those that don't, Lord, I pray that you bless them where they can give and support ministry like the Isaacs. God, I pray, Lord, that you continue to pour your spirit out in this service. Lord, we've laughed and, and, and we, we've cried and we've had a wonderful time. And we just so look forward to the rest of this worship service tonight. Bless this offering again in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. so much. Pastor, I apologize for the misunderstanding. Is it all right if we do a few more songs before we take a break? Okay, we'll just go on like we had a, like we thought we'd planned. <laughs> all right. At this time, we'd like to invite Levi, Becky's son, to come up and sing his song. He has a beautiful voice, a brand new, well, it's not brand new anymore. It feels like it, but uh, he's got a, a solo album that is fantastic. Levi is a young soul, but he has a, a, a great love for old things, old music especially, and uh, you'll love him. Uh oh, we had a tune over there a little bit. Uh oh, <laughs> um, Levi Ben actually helped produce Levi's uh, album, and uh, he wasn't able to get too many good singers on it. Only uh, Vince Gill and Jimmy Fortune from the Statler Brothers, and we helped him on a few songs, but he did a great job. Would you make him welcome one more time, Mr. Levi Bowman, over there? 
Thank you very much. Well, um, my CD is a completely different style than what I've been singing lately. Uh, but I'm going to do one off of that if it's all right with everybody. Um, <laughs> I'm, I know you don't know my music yet, but hopefully after tonight you will. Uh, and this is a song that Sonia and her husband Jimmy wrote. Um, it's called Only Jesus Could Love You More. the first time. Just re-recorded it on an album called Favorites Revisited by Request. See if you recognize this one. I cannot make a world and hold it in my hands. I cannot make the lightning flash across the land. I Father, who can? 
Now he sits he high, sits high and, he and he looks low, and he looks low, and he guides my feet wherever I go. Oh, oh, oh. When I don't understand, when I, don't understand I have a father, I have a father. I have a father. anything aren't you he's able he's good amen and I'm going to do a song for you right now that's not quite so old and uh you know the pastor and I have concluded that we know what song he requested and I'll do that for him in just a little bit thanks to Google right yeah okay this song is what it's not his eyes on the sparrow and I know he watches me it's many things about uh I don't know about tomorrow that's got that line in it. Yes. I know who holds tomorrow. So we'll do that if they let me sing another solo. You know. This song has been very, very special to me now for the past couple of years that we've got to sing it because I'd have to say every, every single time I see this, uh, sing this song, I can think of something in my life that I need to surrender over to Jesus Christ. And um, it seems like uh, we get it wrong. And we think that uh, surrender is a sign of weakness. But the truth is, is if we could learn to surrender everything over to Jesus Christ, it is the only surrender that we will do that will result in total victory. As a matter of fact, it takes more strength to surrender your will to his. Amen. I'll pray about a situation and I'll think that I've left it at the feet of Jesus and somehow I'll wake up the next morning and, and find myself fighting the very thing that I said I was going to leave alone. And I've learned in my life that I have exhausted myself fighting battles that are already won. Because the Bible says that all things work to the good of them that love the Lord. And if he's allowing you to go through whatever it is that you're going through that's completely out of your control then it's for a purpose and a plan. And we need to find our praise in the middle of it because he will work it for your good somehow and then in some way. And even though it's not the outcome you may have thought, but for some reason it's the outcome he has planned for you. 
I'm going to sing this song for someone here tonight that just needs to surrender something over to Jesus Christ. It's called Yours, Amen. Bowing to your will Before your throne of grace The enemy surround me There is no safer place Than surrender
Answer to you, God. Lord, we surrender our debts and our financial struggles because you can take care of them, God. Lord, we surrender our family members that we're praying for and believing for. Lord, we surrender the addiction today. God, we surrender our mental struggles and the oppression and the depression to you, God. You are here. Father, we surrender our children and we surrender our relationships, our marriages. Lord, everything you've given us, God, we give it back to you. Lord, we trust you and we need you because this is your battle, not ours, God. But I pray against, I pray against the rulers of darkness that are attacking homes, that are attacking lives and individuals in this room tonight, God. Father, you said in your word that we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers and rulers of the darkness of this world and spirits in high places. And Father, we're, we're no match for those rulers of darkness. So we're going to let you fight it for us. We're going to stay hidden in your grace and in your love and in your mercy. You're going to shield us and protect us from the enemy, God, and you're going to fight those battles for us. And we thank you, Lord. We praise you. That's our job is to praise you. And we praise you humbly. We thank you, God. Thank you for fighting these battles. You have gone before. So I'm just going to sing your song. And I'll keep trusting wholeheartedly in the victory that you've already won. Because it's yours. It's yours. Amen. Amen. Sing it's yours. It's yours, Amen. Give the Lord a hand cup of prayer. praise because He's so good. Thank you, Jesus. You know, people look at us and they think you can be seated if you want to. They think you guys have got it made. You all get to travel on a bus all the time and get to sing, and you know Bill Gaither. You must not have any problems, but you know what? We've got them just like you do. The devil has fought our family so hard, especially in the last three or four years. We recorded a whole album called Nature's Symphony in 432, subtitled A Journey from Pain to Praise, because God has taught us how to praise our way through the pain, just like Becky said. And when I'm telling you our family's been through stuff, I'm talking about things like cancer. I'm talking about family members' addictions. I'm talking about illnesses that almost kept us from doing what we do tonight. I'm talking about financial struggles, bus breakdowns, worrying about our children, worrying about everything. The enemy has attacked us, and you know, we learn that when God's blessing, the devil's messing. But I want to speak to you tonight. If the devil's messing, get ready because God's fixed to be blessing. It's coming. Don't give up. Don't give up. While we were writing songs for this album, it was in 2014, my husband and I found out that we were pregnant. When, well, I was pregnant. He wouldn't. He didn't do anything. <laughs> With our second child, we had a three-year-old son already, Aiden, and found out we were having a little girl that summer, and man, we were so excited. But you know, life can change, and storms can come up out of nowhere. And I started hemorrhaging, and you know, this, this month, I... I it always uh, reminds me because it was only uh, two weeks from now and we were in Hawassi, Georgia and I started hemorrhaging right there at the Georgia Mountain Fair. I was scared to death. Went straight home that night, straight to the emergency room and they ordered an ultrasound and the doctor came in. It was about two o'clock in the morning finally when they got the test back and the doctor sat down at the edge of the bed and said, Mr. and Mrs. Yuri, I'm so sorry to tell you that your baby girl has passed away. Her little heart has stopped beating. And all I could think to say was, why, God? Why? Have you ever just wanted to know why? Why? Not that I'm questioning what you've allowed, but, but I just wish I had purpose. I wish I understood it because it would help me to get through it and give me peace. And, 
You know, the sweet peace of the Lord came over me and the Holy Spirit came into that room and, and moment by moment, breath by breath, He gave me strength and grace to get through the delivery and the labor and get on with life. Many of you have lost things and you've not gotten over it. Many of you are stuck in the past, but God wants you to move into your future. I don't know who I'm talking to tonight, and I've never said that before, but I know that somebody here needs to let go of some things in the past. As I laid in that hospital bed that night, I knew that I had a decision to make. I could either A, trust God, trust that He promised to work all things to the good of those that love Him, which I do, or I could B, blame God. God, you didn't spare me the pain. You, you, you let me go through this. Where were you? I, I don't need that. I don't need you. Some of you may be sitting here today and that's what you've thought or said. Maybe you haven't even realized that's your mind process. But I'm so glad that I chose to trust God. Because, friends, we are warring against rulers of darkness. We're not warring against our Heavenly Father. He loves you and He wants to heal you and help you and bless you. He wants to bless you. you got to let Him. We wrote a song just a few months after I lost my little Ava. That's our angel's name. I can't wait to see her again. I can't wait. We, I talked, and I don't mean to take time, but, but God is moving in here. And we, uh, we sang last weekend. I don't even remember where we were, Ohio or somewhere. And the lady came up to me at her mission, a young woman, and her husband. And she said, I found out yesterday. I'm 14 weeks pregnant. I found out yesterday my baby's passed away. And I have to go tomorrow, she said, to the doctor and... If I don't deliver her naturally, they're going to have to help me. And she was just weeping. And I don't know what you're going through, friend, but I know that God is faithful. She sent me an email this weekend and said that the baby was gone. We prayed for her and prayed for peace. And she said, thank you for praying for us. And, and I shared with her, um, and I don't know why I feel like sharing this with you tonight, but maybe somebody needs some hope. After I lost my baby for, for months... I just grieved and I longed to know what she looked like. I had gotten past it, but I just said, God, I just, if I could just know what my little girl would look like, it would make me so happy. And one night I prayed, God, would you let me dream about my daughter? Well, the next morning, my little, he's six, he's seven now, but he was six then. And he came to me and he said, Mom, I didn't dream that night, but Aiden came to me the next morning and he said, Mom, he said, I had a dream last night. I said, what was it, buddy? He said, I dreamed that I was on a playground and a little girl ran up to me. And he said, she was about four years old and that's what Ava would have been. And he said, and she said to me, I'm your sister. Can we play? And I said, buddy, what did she look like? He said, she looked just like me. Now tell me God didn't answer my prayer. For whatever reason, I wasn't supposed to see her. But God allowed me to know what she would look like. And God has been faithful to me. And he'll be faithful to you. And he gives you the desires of your heart. Not just your wants, but your, not just your needs, but your wants also. Just keep being faithful. I didn't mean to say all that, but we wrote a song a few months after we lost my little girl. And I'd like to sing this and dedicate it to anybody that's distant from God. And you need to know that he loves you. Listen to this song.
apart and that one there was a surprise um, I want to tell you God is good and he is faithful Aiden is seven years old you want to say hi hi and this is Gatlin he'll be three in a couple I'll tell you months something. what um I need a floss you want to do the floss okay why don't you go up there with Aiden so they can all see you can you see him down here? I don't know. Okay. And then this one right here, she's 18 months. This is my little girl, Evia. Her name's Evia. Oh, I see the camera. Okay. Come here, Gatlin. Come here. I was eight months pregnant with this one, and we were playing the Grand Ole Opry. I didn't know what I was going to name him. And Larry Gatlin walked up to me and said, You going to name that baby after me? And I said, Larry Yuri, No. Gatlin. Well, that's a pretty cool name, and that became his name. Gatlin with a Y. Okay, buddy. You ready? Aiden, scoot over a little bit and give him some room. Okay, here, th this is something they love to do. Go ahead, guys. <laughs> Are you enjoying the Yuri kids tonight? Aiden, Gatlin, and Evie. Thank you, Valencia. Wow. We travel with this whole bunch on a bus, believe it or not. Circus on wheels. <laughs> Circus on wheels. So thank you so much. Wow, I tell you, the Spirit of the Lord is so real here tonight. I feel like it was meant for the Isaacs to be here tonight, Pastor. So thank you. However this worked out, thank you so much for having us. And just a couple of minutes, we are going to be taking an intermission. And then we already had several requests. We're going to come back and finish up with some songs. But before we do, I'd love to tell you what we have available back there. Uh, we have our newest CD, which is called Favorites, Revisited by Request. And the song, I Have a Father Who Can, a lot of classics that we did 25 years ago. We re-recorded them. It's on that. The Nature Symphony, I Love You More, and Yours, Amen. Those new songs, uh, Nature Symphony 432, A Journey from Pain to Praise, that's our next new one. What new one. We have about seven or eight different CDs. Tonight, the new CD is $20, uh, but if you get three, you get any three for 40 How's that? So that's a good deal. And uh, we also have DVDs for $20. I have a book that I've written, my autobiography, that's $15. I'd love to share a copy with you and autograph it. Also, read the whole book on audio. If you like to listen in your car or on your computer, it's on a CD, seven hours long. I'd love to autograph a copy of that for you. Don't forget my grandson, Levi. He just graduated college this past spring, and uh, he announced his calling to preach. In fact, he's preaching, yes. And if you come to this church, don't come to hear him. But if you don't go to this church and you're looking for a place to go, Levi's preaching next Sunday at Hawassi at the morning service. I'm so excited for that. It's a big opportunity for him. This will be our 20th year there, so we did something special, and they asked him. And Karen Peck will be there, too. But, you know, go to church here, grab some lunch, and then come over. So that will be good, good enough. Uh, anyway, we want you to visit with us. We do have some prayer box necklaces that are really a uh, nice gift. You open it up, and you put your prayer request inside. Those are just $15. Or that and a bracelet that we have that this says, this is not my battle. It's yours. Amen. Those are also 15 but we can get both of them tonight for $20. So come by and visit with us. And uh, before we take an intermission, there is something special that we wanted to discuss with you. Well, Mom said that she had been talking to Pastor and that the church loves Israel and that they're actually going in the spring. Is this your fourth time you're going? Well, that is awesome. Uh, God bless you for loving Israel. We also love Israel, and we have a lot of reasons why we love Israel. Of course, it's our Messiah's homeland, but also we have relatives that live there. And, of course, with our Jewish background, we get to be dual citizens of Israel and the United States automatically, so we love that. But we love to go to Israel, and we're going again um, in November for our 14th. 
trip to Israel. And uh, anyway, we want you to go with your pastor, but if you can't wait that long and you want to go with us and then go with him, that'd be fine too. So, uh, But no, what we wanted to, to tell you about is something very special. As you know, this is the 70th anniversary this year of Israel as a nation. In that wonderful 70 years, God bless Israel. Amen. And uh, we wanted to come to Israel bearing gifts, and we didn't want to go empty-handed because this is a special year. So we decided that we're going to do a concert in Jerusalem, uh, December the 3rd, during our trip there. We have a group that's going with us, a tour group, and uh, and Karen Peck and New River is also going to be with us. She is our co-host. But we're having a concert that is free to the people of Israel. And at this concert, the Lord laid it upon our hearts to bless uh, the Holocaust survivors and the Israeli soldiers. So we're raising money to, um, to bring in 100 Holocaust survivors, there's still thousands of them living, and 100 Israeli soldiers because we want to bless those that are guarding them and guarding God's homeland. Um, and so in order to provide them a meal, we also want to give them a gift card for the holidays. We'll be there during Hanukkah, and it's almost Christmas. So we want to give each of them a very nice gift card and take care of them and give them a great night to remember. And we want to minister the gospel of Jesus to them. But we need a lot of help to be able to do that because it's very expensive. We're also going to go visit an orphanage and share God's love there. And, you know, sadly, a lot of people that are Jewish, especially the Holocaust survivors, the only view that they've ever had of Christianity is what Hitler taught them what Christianity was. They need to know the real Jesus. They need to know that people in America pray for them, especially the Christians are praying for them and care for them. And so we're asking you, if you have a couple bucks in your pocket, if you have a five, a 20, or a 100 that you wouldn't miss, will you please come by the table and drop it in the little box that we have? It's called the Fishman Isaacs Israel Initiative. Maybe you'd like to dig deeper. You can write a check if you want to to Helping Hand Coalition. That's the nonprofit we're uh, giving through. Um, It is a tax-deductible gift. You can also give online, theisaacs.com. There's a little menu button at the top. If you click on that and click on Bless Israel, you can read more about it. But if everybody in here would give, you know, a few bucks or five bucks, it would really help us to be able to um, bring in people. Now, listen, our goal is to to raise $50,000 between now and November 24th. We're a little bit over halfway, so we need a lot of help to get that done. So if you, if you love Israel and you want to bless them, we're going to go tell them this is from your Christian American friends. So help us bless Israel. Would you do that tonight? Just a couple bucks. If you could spare it, we'd sure appreciate it. Um, and then, Mom, we had these T-shirts designed also to help with our, our trip. <clears throat> she said we have a limited supply because we almost sold out of them last night. They're very soft. Did you know that to spell Jerusalem, you have to spell USA right in the middle of it? J-E-R-U-S-A-L-E-M. I don't think that's a coincidence. I love that. So we we have these cool t-shirts and on the back it has the Israeli and American flags united and it says in God we trust these are only twenty dollars it's going for a great cause so come by and get your t-shirts while they last or we might be able to take an order for you if you want one okay we've held you a long time but I wouldn't trade nothing for the Holy Spirit so we'll, when we come back we'll do a little bit shorter set for you pastor and we'll try to do your requests are y'all doing good are you glad you came yeah. all right stick around God bless you Get the band to come on up here and play. Ladies' restroom will be out this exit to your right. Gentlemen, you'll go out this exit and to your left. Rumfelt kids, y'all come on, come up here, and that way the people ain't going to be sitting there for nothing.
Well, Kellen, you got to really be tough on him to get him to sing, but uh, we're going to get him to sing this song right here. Just bear down and do it, Long Black Train, because there's a little boy back there wanting to hear it. Where you at, son? Right there. Yes. And Lauren's been wanting to hear y'all sing. Raise your hand, Lauren, right there. Look, look at her. She is so sweet. She went to school here at Carolina Christian Academy, and we love her so much, and we miss her so bad since she's been out. So we're singing for you tonight, okay? Oh, I'm telling you, that was great. We'll sing till they till till they're ready to come back for you, okay? <laughs> I love this song right here. How many of you glad you're saved tonight? Give God praise one big time now. Emmanuel's veins The sin was plunged Beneath the flood And God saved Sin 
Since then I walk in forgiveness All of my guilt was erased The chains of the past are broken at last I got saved Oh, I got saved I'm undone by the mercy of Jesus I'm undone by the goodness of the Lord I'm restored and made right He got a hold of my life I've got Jesus I do I've tested and tasted your grace I was so lost to life at the cross and got saved Oh, I got saved I'm undone by the mercy of Jesus I'm undone by the goodness of the Lord I'll be started I've got Jesus, I put a one more. The love of God gave me His part. The love of God won't let me stay the same. The love of God pulls me up high. His will is stronger. His word. Of Jesus, I'm undone by the goodness of the Lord. I'm restored and made right. He got a hold of my life. I've got Jesus, I put a wall for. I'm restored and made right. He got a hold of my life. I've got Jesus, I put a wall I'm undone by the goodness of the Lord. I'm restored and made right. He got a hold of my life. I've got Jesus. I could I want I told him he's going to have to let us know if he's going to go up like that. We'll do this song here and we'll have the Isaacs back for part two. I'm glad that what Sonia said, that God is a chain breaker. He's bigger than any problem you got. Amen. If you've been walking the same old road for miles and miles. If you've been hearing the same old voice tell the same old lies If you're trying to feel the same old holes inside There's a better life There's a better life If you got pain He's a pain taker If you feel lost Search for the light of day in the dead of night And we've all found ourselves worn out from the same old fight And we've all run to things we know just ain't right When there's a better life 
Wow, what a family. Oh, my goodness. What talent, Pastor. Do you get to hear that all the time here? That's amazing. Wow. Awesome. Well, I tell you, we had so many requests, and we don't want to keep you here another hour and a half. So we're going to try to do the songs that we get the most requests for. So we don't even know what are, what are they. <laughs> we, we had a few requests. We'll try to get to those. I'm blown away. Your family's so talented. Beautiful job. I'm looking for big things out of them. Okay, thank you all for visiting us at the table and uh, for blessing our Fish, Fishman Isaacs Israel initiative tonight. Here's a song that Becky and I wrote, and uh, we wrote this quite a few years ago, and our friends Mike and Kelly Bowling recorded this song and took it all the way to number one. They have such a beautiful anointed version of this song, but we did a CD called The Writer Series, and uh, it's songs that she and I wrote uh, that other people may mostly recorded, and this is one of them, and this is how we wrote it. It's called Your Cries Have Awoken the Master. Hey! 
got to remember you're not out there alone. Just because he's not speaking doesn't mean he's not listening. He hears your voice. He hears your voice. I love it. Y'all are Baptocostals out there. Let the spirit move. We like that. I don't know about tomorrow. I just live.
Love that song. I don't know where I would be without Jesus. I have a uh, a family member that I love with all of my heart that battles addiction. And I can't tell you how many times I've said the name Jesus. Oh. 
Oh, man. God has been faithful to me, and I want to tell you that he'll be faithful to you. I am a... uh, I am a very, very, very strong type A personality. Amen. <laughs> Becky says I have control issues. Oh, I just got saved. <laughs> I'm assuming a couple of them said it. But in my defense, I know if I, if I do it, it'll get done right. <laughs> Come on, my type A's. But if I were honest with you, I have enough problems of my own that I think I control, but I really don't. My family member's addiction problem started several years ago. And I found, I found myself fighting daily, minute, hours, all night long, wondering what they were doing, how they were doing. What could I do to make it better? What did I do to make them be that way? I had to learn to give my battle to God. Just like my family member did that deals with the addiction. My heart is so heavy tonight just because I I, I just, I feel that I want to say something. I want God to move through me. My sisters wrote a song for me to sing and during this time of me finding my place. You know, I got saved at a really young age. I was seven years old when I accepted Christ. And I believed at that time God had my past, what little bit there was, and I believed in my future with him. But because of my type A personality and me just having control issues, I didn't ever just give up full trust. I'm just being honest. The hardest thing in the world for me to do was stand there, stand by and watch someone that I loved destroy their lives in front of me. I didn't get it. And uh, that's when I learned who God and Jesus was to me. Because that's really when I learned how to pray for God's will to be done in my life. And because of my family member's addiction, it's drawn me closer to God in a way that I've never been before. Just like Sonia's story that she told, I had to learn to let it go. That song, This Is Not My Battle, was written for me. I really believe that. They wrote another song that I'm going to try to sing for you that that pretty much sums up where I am right now. And because of my family member's addiction, I'm so thankful that I have Jesus. He brought me the peace in those times when I had no idea how I would make it through. This place that I'm in Feels so unfair 
this weight on my chest seems more than I can bear. I can't see where this is going to end, but I'll stay on my knees till then. If that's what it takes to break my will, to make me still enough to hear your voice, then I'll trust in you, O oh Lord. If that's what it takes to realize without you I'm just going the wrong way, living life in vain. Lord, humble me a little more each day, if that's what it takes. This is not the path I'd ever choose for me. And the man that I can be So Lord I'll give you all my fears And I'll cry a few more tears If that's what it takes To break my will To make me still enough To hear your voice Then I'll trust in you what it takes to realize without you I'm just going the wrong way living life in vain Lord humble me a little more each day if that's what it takes takes to give my all and totally surrender to your plan though I may not understand Lord give me strength to make it one more day if that's what it family member that I have spent so many nights praying for, just celebrated two years and two months of sobriety.
with my soul. With my soul. It is well. It is well. With my That's something I want to read here because even though we've had a, a concert tonight, worship service, there may be someone here who's not saved. And you know, it'd be a tragedy for someone to walk out of these doors tonight and not know the Lord that we're praising, not know the Lord that we're thanking and, and, and blessing. He's able. And a few weeks ago, God burned in me a message. And some of the folks I've seen shirts. Matter of fact, one of the members brought me one in Isaiah chapter 43. But now thus saith the Lord that created thee, O Jacob, and he that formed thee, O Israel, fear not. Can you say that with me tonight? Fear not. Say it again. Fear not. One more time. Fear not. He said, for I have redeemed thee. I'm glad that I know tonight I've been redeemed. I've not been purchased by the blood of goats or bulls or birds or even a lamb, but I've been purchased by the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world, John 1:29. 1 Peter 1:18, for we were not redeemed with corruptible things such as silver or gold, but by the precious blood of Christ. As of a lamb without spot, without blemish. I'm glad that I've been redeemed. But then he said, I've, I've called thee by thy name. I'm glad as a nine-year-old boy, about a quarter of a mile from where I'm standing right now. At that time, it was Route 4, about 16. It's 181 Moore Hill Road now. But being back in the back hall, down that wooden hall, Last room on the right, the Holy Ghost came, walked right into my room, tapped me on my heart, convicted me of my sin. I got up and I went to the two people I knew that could help me, my mom and my daddy. I said, Dad, I said, God's speaking to me. He said, what do you need? I said, I need to be saved. I dropped down there on my knees. And I asked God to save me. Why? Because he called me by my name. He had already redeemed me, but I hadn't received that redemption myself. He called my name. He may be calling your name tonight. Can you lift your hand? If he's called your name before and you accepted it, can you lift it up right now? Unashamed. Unashamed. And you know, I haven't always been faithful to him like I should. Lord, I would hate I would hate in this building for my life the times of the failures to be put on these screens before you. I'd be so ashamed. And I'm glad that God cast our sins from the east, from the west. They're forgotten. But not only did he say, I've redeemed you and I've called you by name. These are reasons why we shouldn't fear. But then he said, thou art mine. Whoop. <laughs> I'm glad to be an American tonight. I'm glad. I'm glad to be a part of this church and my name's on church roll. I'm glad. But more than that, there's a father sitting on a throne in heaven. And praise God, he says through his spirit by way of his son, Chris, thou art mine. And then the Bible says, when thou passest through the waters, I will be with thee. And through the rivers they shall not overflow thee. And when thou walkest through the fire, 
thou shalt not be burned, neither shall the flame be kindled upon thee. For I am the Lord thy God. <laughs> I don't have to fear anymore. God's not given me the spirit of fear, but of power. I said power and love and have a sound mind. And if you're here tonight and you don't know this darling Jesus, let me tell you something. He loves you. There was a little girl one time over in England. And she got lost. And she was crying. And there was a one of the policemen, a Bobby, came up to her and she said, he said, honey, what's wrong? She said, I'm lost, I'm lost. He said, well, do you know where Big Ben Clock is? She said, no, no, and cried more. He said, what about the House of Parliament? Do you know where it is? She cried the more. But then he thought about a cross that was in a big cemetery. And he said, what about Sharon's cross? Do you know where that is? And said that little girl lifted that little chin and started clapping her hands and said, oh, the cross, the cross. If you can point me to the cross, I can find my way home. <laughs> Hallelujah. I'm glad somebody pointed me to the cross. And tonight, as you bow your heads for a moment, if you're here, man, woman, boy, or girl, and you'd say, preacher, I'm not saved. Would you pray for me when you pray? Could you just slip up your hand? Is there one? Just slip up your hand. Is there one? Not going to bear you. Not going to come to you. But we don't want to miss you tonight. I'm not saved. Pray for me when you pray. God bless that little hand. I'm going to pray. And if you need to be saved, you feel God speaking to you. You come forward tonight. Kind Jesus, Lord, we, we're thankful for the the wonderful time we've had this evening. But God, for those that are unsaved, may you save them. God, help us, heal us. God, give us hope that we've never had before. God, remind us daily. You've redeemed us. You've called us by our name and we are yours. God, will praise you for what you do. In Jesus' name, as we stand all over the building, as they do. Isaacs tonight. How about it for Jesus tonight? Amen. God bless you. Thank you for coming. And please go by if you hadn't been able to go to their table yet or just say hello to them. Please do that. Uh, thank you for coming out. Also, just some, a couple of announcements. Um, tomorrow night, after our short service here, we're going to be going to Moss Memorial. They start revival tomorrow. Uh, evening with, with Dr. Edis Dockery, our good friend. And so we'll be going out there with them, following our service here, supporting their meeting because they're, they're always kind to come here and support the Unity Revival. Also, on the 14th, how many of you like old-fashioned gospel preaching? I mean powerful. 
and singing by the Parsons, the Joy Heirs, and, and the Duncans from Florida is going to be here this year. It's going to be fantastic. Tammy Jones Robinette. And, and it's just going to be a phenomenal time. You don't want to miss that. Mike Blanton and Evidence, that's October 14th through the 19th. So you're going to want to be a part of that. It's going to be a great time. That's coming up on us. And then if you are interested in going to Israel in March, we'd love to talk to you about that. And, and then it's, it's the greatest trip ever besides to the altar. That's what I tell people. I got to say that. Amen, Sister Crystal. And the Lord. <laughs> Did y'all get that? When you get saved? When you get married, all right? <laughs> so anyway, we'd love to talk to you about that. And, and Karen can help you with that. Hold your hand up, Karen. She can help you with that as well. And also, the Unity Revival, the Christian Unity Revival, February. It's going to be on again, and we look forward to that. You'll hear more about that coming up. We never dismiss the service here because we've got service just coming up in a few hours in the morning. And it's going to be great. And we're looking forward to that. Brother Mark Langley's with us tomorrow and his sweet family. So we're excited about that. So you know the drill. If you've ever been here before, visitors, if you don't have a place to call home, come here. We'll treat you so many ways. You'll have to like one of them. All right, let's get our hands up in the air. We exercise. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. May God bless you. Be careful and good night. Amen. Praise the Lord. Are you done?